So give it up one more time so we can have an amazing conversation about technology operations with Conrad Maneed. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, Render? What up, Render? Any locals in? All right, following Tom Wobble from Microsoft is like following Kelsey Hightower. Who knows who Kelsey Hightower is? All right, godfather of Kubernetes. All right, so KG, thank you. I didn't write all that intro, I don't know who did. So thank you for that. All right, the slides are up. So Conrad Benid, I'm head of tech ops, VP and head of tech ops at GAPEC. I do it all from here from Atlanta. Gap is out in the Bay Area. Hey, Ashley. You gotta check out our recruiters at the end. Ashley, over there. All right, a little bit about me. I'm from the Northeast. I've been in Atlanta since the Olympics. Any Bostonians, Celtics tonight? So I grew up in Boston, electrical engineer by education. Been in software game for a while. Little bio, I've been with Lockheed, I've been with AT&T, I've been with CVS, Xerox, a number of well-known things around town. I'm up with Gap, been at the Gap for about 24 months. I joined during the pandemic on Zoom, <laughs> when interviews were all done on Zoom, and then started traveling again. So, little quick bio. Happy y'all are here. I'm glad to be back at the Nerd Conference. It's been a while. Thank you. So a little bit uh, Tech Ops at Gap. Let's talk about it. All right. So a little bit about Tech Ops. We are the health and engine behind all of the brands you all have come to love, right? We, the tech behind all the brands. Old Navy, Banana, Gap, Athleta. We make it all work. We're really transforming e-commerce and cloud and stores as well as distribution centers. So all the logistics to get clothing from Asia Pacific back to our distribution centers and to you, my team enabled all of that stuff, make it work. How do we do that? Not moving. First, we'll take a step back teach you a little bit more about Gap. I don't know if you knew all of this stuff. About 53 years old, born in 1969. Older than most of you in the room. That's how long Gap's been around. We're the number two sales e-com behind only who? Who? All right, behind Amazon. We have about 3,400 stores worldwide. Some of them we own and operate here in, in town. Some of them are franchise in Europe and China and Japan. We've got about 97,000 global, global employees in our stores, the ones you interact with the most, but we have headquarters in San Francisco. We have those in our distribution centers. The closest one to here is Gallatin, Tennessee. Anybody from Tennessee? Lots of robot, robotics and IoT that make all that stuff work to get all of the clothing, hopefully you all are wearing right now, to you at home. So we have about eight to 10 of those. We have a couple in Canada we just opened as we launch and expanded our Athleta business into Canada. We've shipped over 100 million plus units globally. Those places run seven by 24 by 365. I'm gonna tell you how tech make all that work frictionless. Hopefully you see some folks that you recognize. Uh, we've, over the years, we've partnered with some real creative, cool folks, artists, folks that kind of have the same values that we have as a company. Any Dapper Dan fans? Dapper Dan. Dapper Dan, we just launched his product. Uh, I've ordered my Dap sweatshirt. So he's just partnered with Gap, we've launched Switch. We've also got NFTs with Daff Dapper Dan. Yeah, formerly known as 
Kanye, Ye, Yeezy. So, one of our partners. Our gold medalist, Simone Biles, our athletic partner. Uh, recently, Alicia Keys, not listed here. Allison F Felix, any track star, Allison Felix? Partner as well. So lots of folks that believe in the same values that we at GAP believe in. Our culture and our purpose. At GAP, we believe inclusivity will change the world. That's why we're here at Render as a platinum sponsor. We think inclusion is going to change the world. The reason we, do, we think that Right? We've done a lot here in terms of making sure col the colors we use matches all of the variety and diverse skin tones. We support the uh, LGBTQ community. We support our employees and empower them to have a voice in terms of the workplace and how they work. So all of that makes us inclusive by design. It's part of our DNA. Another core value of ours is sustainability. We really believe in empowering women. You could read all this stuff on your own, enabling opportunity and enriching communities. Our team, from a tech perspective, are driving reducing carbon footprint by exiting all our data centers and pushing our workload to cloud. And we measure that quarterly. It's one of our KPIs. All right, a little bit about tech. What's tech mean at GAP? What do we do? This is a tech conference. Let's kind of talk a little bit techish. We, our business, our customer file is about 64 million customers. About 55 million of those customers participate in our royalty loyalty program. We have about 120 million visits per month. 500 million unique visits annually. Our team members, just employees of GAP, about 2,000 plus globally, not including partners, and we hope some of you become team members. During the holidays, we ship, we process about 12,000 orders per minute. That's like during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Our distribution centers that I've talked about, one of which is in Tennessee, we ship about a million units a day. So very high tech at scale to get all this stuff work. Not if you've heard about the business and the key capabilities from our business. Here are some capabilities from our tech perspective. How do we make it all work within tech ops? You heard Tom from Microsoft earlier talk to you all about Argo deployments and A-B testing, and I heard a lot of cool questions around that. My team's getting it all worked through a modern tech stack. We're really infrastructure as code. Removing friction, removing dependencies on, on infrastructure and platform. We do that with a modern tech stack across app engines, databases, CI, CD, Spinnaker, Argo, Jenkins rollouts. We have a cloud-first mentality. Some of the stuff you'll see later on, we use React to develop them. A lot of the observability capabilities to monitor, monitor all those packages I've talked about. We are a Kubernetes shop, evolving the serverless, just abstracting infrastructure from engineering. Transitioning our messaging platform, we're a huge Kafka as a service is one of the capabilities we provide to our engineering teams. Another key one for us is really a lot of the work we're doing with container deployment using Docker. It's huge for us. Now that you've heard some of the tech and modernization, how does tech ops, what's the scale of tech ops, really? Any network engineers in the room? Any DevOps engineers? 
So the scale is 35,000 network devices. We have about 20,000 plus container instances. Um, we have millions of transactions. The teams that run tech ops consist of hybrid engineers, hybrid cloud engineers. It consists of observability and automation engineering. We talked about that earlier with Microsoft, Prometheus. Um, we consist of network engineering as well as site reliability engineering. I want to share a few of the cool, innovative stuff we're using to transform and drive the business at scale. One of the ones that's near and dear at Gap, we have twice a year, we do a hackathon with our team, with, where teams get to innovate and develop for a day with prizes. The tech ops team developed recently won one of the prizes with a ne network tech, tech bot. You, you ask, how do we manage all this at scale? So the ability to have a, the ability to ask where is a problem occurring in the network and for a bot to respond to it was pretty cool for the team that won that. Help us figure out things a lot quicker, reducing mean time to repair, reducing mean time to engage, reduce turnaround time for our SREs, and it was device agnostic with multi-cloud focus. Some of the tools we used there was Azure Bot. It learned as it, as we uses it, it learns itself. We use Azure Lewis. Tom is, thank you Tom, Tom's not, I'm not supposed to say that we are a customer. <laughs> and then Python is huge for us as an infrastructure team, infrastructure as code. Another one I talked about when I mentioned 3,400 stores worldwide. We can't deploy an engineer to every store. It's just cost prohibitive. So how do we have visibility and eyes everywhere? This is one of the tools we've developed. It's a single dashboard that helps us see when the store goes down. When you walk in the store and you, you can't use your wireless, we know it before it happens. When the kiosk that you're using to check out, when the handheld devices that the store associates are using to help you check out and scan your products break, we know it before it happens. So we, we've, and we're doing that all in one place. I think we have some Georgia stores listed on the bottom here, but we have, we can, we can look at stores by brand, by location, based on that one dashboard, and have a one-stop shop to filter and see the experience that we're providing to you is not affected to technology. Tools involved here again, as I said prior, React, any React developers? Come see us, come see Ashley. We hire. We use Python, JPython as well to get our store's visibility dashboard working. Is that it? Any questions? Good question. His question was how much of the hardware development is done in house versus third party? So a lot of the hardware is in the stores we have, they based on uh, Android or iOS. So we do have a development product team that's focusing on that in-house development for our next generation point of sales, for instance. So a lot of it is in-house, but the hardware is purchased obviously from say Apple or a third party. But our teams deployed all over the world, so it's not just based California, we have a tech team in Ohio, one in San Fran, one in Hyderabad. We also, Atlanta is one of our hubs, as well as Dallas, so that the work is done anywhere. I'll try to hear you. <laughs> Thank you. 
re a little bit. If you could come, come up a little, I'll come to you. I'm gonna give you the mic. <laughs> So I'm in a tech company that's scaling up, and one issue that you kind of run into is that there are a lot of different domains, specifically different programming languages, different design patterns, and all that stuff. And I'm wondering kind of how you consolidate the knowledge and make it transferable between domains so someone can get like a full picture of the system. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, uh, thank you for that. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. I, one of the things, we, we, we are an engineering culture. We are an open source culture, so we try to avoid vendor lock-ins. Uh, a few things we do at Gap we have, and Ashley can talk about it if you stop by our booth, we have an engineering development as we bring talent into Gap. Um, we focus on full stack engineering, right? So we don't really wanna stifle innovation. We want you to come and experiment, test and learn. Um, we have we don't have central teams. This is truly accountable. We believe like you build it, you own it, you run it. You don't call my team to run anything, you, you run it. So that's DevOps, true DevOps accountability. So you have responsibility of not only the platform but also taking the phone call at night. So you better select the right tool to sort of have the resiliency built into your product. So that's. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what kind of culture we are at Gap. All right, thanks. Any others? Okay, coming on over. Thanks. Um, I was wondering with your mobile application development, if, if you know what went into the decision, it, it sounds like you guys developed natively on Android and iOS versus using a cross-platform solution, something like Flutter or React Native. How did your team, was it just because it was built before those technologies were mature enough, or how did your team decide to go with native development over a cross-platform solution? Good question. My peer, Hemoth, owns that, pro that the e-com team, so I'll, I'll do my best to answer. I think for a while we were just focusing on iOS. We really listened to our customers and, and Android, we added in in terms of developing for Android as well. So we're really focusing on the customer needs, right? We, so that's, that's really what factors into the decision, not so much tech, just what the customer wants and removing that friction so our customers can shop regardless of platform they, they choose. So pretty simple for us. I'm following your eyes. If there's more questions, do not hold it. We have a little bit, a little bit more time with you, so if there's any more questions or any last remarks, you can go ahead. Getting my cardio in today. Here we go, you ready? Hey, uh, what exactly do you use Kafka for, and how did you land on Kafka instead of some other messaging platform? Great question. I hope there's no uh, IBM MQ fans in the room. <laughs> so a lot of our event streaming where we have to make real-time decisions between all of the touch points, order management system, when you order products, we, Kafka's in the engine that drives that. Well, we really transitioning from an MQ legacy to a Kafka as a service for developers. So my team really creating that curated developer experience so we not, you can leverage Kafka as you need it and you don't need a platform team to sort of help you do that. So really focusing on developer portal experience for all of the capabilities and products that infrastructure as code help to drive. Hope that helps. So Kafka talking to some of the orders that has to get shipped in our distribution centers. So some of that stuff, our warehouse management system, as example. So Kafka's underneath all of that. Hello. Um, that's, thank you. Where are you? I'm behind the, I'm behind the column. Um, 
So your tech stack seemed pretty like cloud agnostic, and I know you mentioned avoiding vendor lock-in. What are your thoughts about working towards going multi-cloud? Has that ever crossed your guys' mind strategically? Tom don't like that question. Microsoft's still in the room, I can't answer. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, we really wanna, um... so today we, we, we leverage a couple of clouds. Um, I've talked about Azure. We, we're dabbling with some analytics and data science stuff with GCP as well. So we really wanna focus on the platform, abstract the platform, so building that developer on-ramp so you don't have to care about whether you're deploying your workload in GCP or in Azure. Or We did a little bit of Oracle Cloud infrastructure for some legacy database products before we modernized the cloud native, like Postgres or, right? So really my team focuses on that experience that whether it's Terraform or to, in the middle of the developer portal that I talk about, that's, that's like our bread and butter, what we provide value add to our engineering stakeholders. So you can really onboard and you don't have to care if you're running, right, you know, GKE, Google Kubernetes, or AKS in Azure, you just deploy your workload, if that makes sense. So the focus is the middle layer versus investing really in the plumbing, just let Tom from Microsoft worry about the plumbing. <laughs> Glad you're still here, Tom. And um, so, so that's our thoughts, right? That's the philosophy. I hope that answers the question. Other thoughts, questions? Come join us. We do have a networking event later, but I'll, I'm, I'll still take questions. All right. All right, we hiring. Ashley's here. <laughs> Come to our booth. We got, I think we got gifts. We have a networking event at the uh, Ponce the rooftop. So thank you very much. Give it up for Conrad. <laughs> <laughs>